So Justin, how did you get started in swimming? Um, well, my sister uh, actually got started before I did. She was uh, six years old, I was 12, I was playing soccer at the time. And somehow when she was in her little swim team that she was doing, she got really good at what she did. So my parents kind of plucked me out of soccer and said, well, you're gonna swim too. And we're gonna do this as a family sport. And at first it wasn't really what I wanted to do because I love soccer, soccer was my thing. Um, but I had no really the choice in the matter. I kind of got stuck doing it at the same time as she did. So growing up in a swim family, what were some of the struggles you had with the training and the nutrition? Well, it was the training part. I didn't want to do it because I really, I just was not a swimmer. In my mind back then, I didn't think I was a swimmer. I didn't, wasn't motivated to, to want to do it because I felt like I was forced to do it. Uh, for most of, I'd say it's up until I was about 14, 15 before I went to high school, um, I just did not like training, I did not like doing all the work that, that, that was required to be good. And so with that, I didn't really eat that good either. <laughs> um, but as I got older, and it's actually as soon as I went into high school swimming, everything changed for me when I realized I was way better than a lot of my peers. And back then my, at Bloomingdale High School, uh, my class, we, were the, we broke all the, the, the team records at that time, and we were basically treated like God. So it, all of a sudden, swimming became my favorite sport. Um, and the only thing that I really wanted to do, and I kind of forgot about soccer and started eating better, and I got skinny and muscles and all that jazz. It just was a really good experience for me. So now you're a coach with the Southwest Stars. Mm -hmm. How would your kids <clears throat> view the training that you did when you were growing up in the swimming community compared to what we have now? Well, I'd say um, yeah, I. I most of my, my hard training was in the 90s. I, I swam under Peter Banks, Coach Peter Banks, who's now in Ireland. And Peter trained two girls to the Olympics uh, for the United States team. And we were a very distance-based program. So everything that we did was very geared towards distance. And it was very hard in those swimming. Um, you swam until you basically passed out and you did what you had to do. Um, you know incredible astronomically amounts of yardage that were put into what we did uh, compared to now where it's not so much. I mean, there's some programs that are like that, but there's a lot more variety out there than what was in back then because back then that's what everybody did. So you mentioned the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Now you have a little bit of Olympic history inside your family. Who would that be? Oh, it'd be my sister. <laughs> um, the same time we, we, as we started out, that little swim school that got her started, uh, basically started her career, and she was good from the time she was six to the time she was 24, and made the Olympic team in 2004, and ended up with a silver medal. That's great, that's great. Let's, let's advance a little bit. What made you decide to go into being a coach for swimming? Well, it, it's kind of a funny story. I, I never thought, after I left the pool as a senior in high school, I never thought I was going to come back. I, that was not in my, my life plan. You know, I'd, I'd left all my accolades and everything that I put into swimming. High school swimming for me was, was end all be all, and then I was just kind of swimming just to stay in shape. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I just uh, I was still in college, and I found a part time job as a beer vendor <laughs> at the, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And one of my assistant, one of my coaches from back when I swam found out that I was doing it and he had taken a position at the Aquatic Club at Temple Terrace and said, hey, why don't you just come over and, you know, I can get you a job as a lifeguard. It's way better than selling beer <laughs> for the Lightning. And I was like, okay, maybe you're right. And at that time I just, I was pretty much over walking up and down in nosebleed seats selling beer. And so uh, I, I started lifeguarding at the Aquatic Club at Temple Terrace and after a while, he's like, hey, why don't you come and coach a summer league team for us? You know, we need some help, why don't you do that? I was like, okay, I'll do that. And that basically, like, that's kind of how I fell into it. I started coaching summer league, I started teaching lessons, I got really good at teaching lessons, and they asked me to be uh, an age group coach. Then I eventually became the, the head age group coach. Um, and then eventually, uh, Sean Deliri, who I, I, he was the coach who got me into it, uh, ended up uh, leaving the team, and when he left, um, I took over his position. And it was kind of one of those tumultuous times where he left, and you know the, everybody on the team left also. And 
all that I had to work with was probably 10 swimmers on that team. And it was a very, very difficult time for me because I was still in college. I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but I just knew that I had to give these kids a place to swim and, and something to do um, while they were on team. And so I learned everything I needed to learn. I read up everything that I needed to read. And, you know, three or four years later, we ended up building the team back up to about 60 to 70 kids. And then eight years after that, we were in the 150s. And so it was, a, it was almost like guerrilla coaching, <laughs> in effect, that uh, it, was, it was tough, it was hard, but I made it work. So when, when you're dealing with kids on a daily basis, you're working with them, you're training with them, they're listening to you, they're listening to how to swim a race, they're also putting in the yardage. Mm -hmm. What do you tell that swimmer who does not have a great meet and just looks complex and like, I, ju I just don't understand what's going on. Well, I, I heard uh, something recently. It's very, very recently. Uh, I had a swimmer that, that was going through that. And she was talking to me uh, about how she couldn't drop any time in the 50. And it was like almost like punching walls or punching holes in a wall. And she was just tired of punching holes in the wall. And I kind of came up. I was like, well, you know, if you punch a lot of holes in a wall, eventually it's going to crumble and that wall won't be there anymore. And so I look at it like this. I think perseverance is what drives athletes to greatness. And sometimes you have to deal with, with, with punching through walls to get past that wall in order to be successful. How much has swim changed since when you were swimming back in, in, in growing up, to even into high school, to where you are now coaching today? Well, I think uh, back then, you, the, 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 the concept of working hard is way different than it is right now. I think if you were to, to get 100 kids swimming, probably back then you'd have about 75 to 80% of them that would really work hard to, to try to get to those goals and, and do whatever it took to get there. I feel like now in what I call the ATM generation where everything seems to be handed to them and, and very easy, it's almost like they expect things to happen without really working too hard. So it's almost shifted so we have maybe 10 to 15% of them that really work hard and everybody else is just hoping that some miracle is gonna happen and the best time fairy is gonna come down from the trees and you know, bless them with the best time. Speaking of that, wishing something is gonna happen, do you believe that swimmers today rely more on the swimsuit than they do the training and everything going into it? I think a lot of them do. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, with all the, the, the advances in technology with swimming, I think the suit is, is one of the things that that's changed the most for all of us. I mean, I remember the days when I was in high school, I just wore a paper suit. And I remember when we put that paper suit on, man, we, we thought we were, we were it. And I couldn't even imagine putting on one of those suits. I well, I know I can't fit into one now. <laughs> There's no way to fit into one now. But, um, but just the, the, the feeling of one of those suits probably makes them feel invincible. And you know, I, I, I've seen the suit work psychologically to some swimmers. I've seen the suit not do anything to some swimmers. And I think it's all perception. If they think they're wearing a suit that's going to make them fast, they're going to go fast. But in my personal opinion, I don't think it really matters what you wear. So let's talk about as, as you were growing up in swimming, what was your best moment in swimming? Well, I had, I had a few good moments. I think personally for myself, uh, when I was in high school, my senior year, our relay team was came in second at States um, by a hundredth of a second. And just, I remember sitting there watching uh, this guy named John Wright come down and just barrel and almost catch uh, a lineman uh, swimmer. And like that would always remember, I'll always remember that for the rest of my life and that feeling and that the whole atmosphere. Uh, but I think in swimming as a whole, I think when my sister made the Olympic team was probably the, the greatest moment for me. And I could say that for the rest of our family. Um, yeah, at Long Beach, we were all the way up in the stands and they dove in for that 100 freestyle. As soon as she flipped her at the 50, I knew that she was gonna make it. And when she hit the wall and we looked up, we were just like, oh my God, did that just really, I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about it now. It's just, it was just the most incredible moment that I can't even describe to anybody because it was, just, here's my baby sister, a, a lifelong dream that she's had since she was probably eight or nine you know, really coming true for her years later. And not only just, just 
was a bittersweet to see her make the team, but like I, I knew all the struggles that she had leading to that moment where you know, she was a great age grouper. She she'd idolized these swimmers growing up. She'd gone to college. She'd beaten some of those those records that those swimmers had to go into Olympic trials for the first time and, and bombing her first one and, and going into depression to, to overcome depression mm -hmm. and swim at the Olympic trials and hit that wall and make the Olympic team and get recognized for her accomplishments, you can't take that away. It's, it's something that'll always be with me. And that I, she probably, of course, <laughs> it's much better for her. But as a, as her brother, it just it. It, it was an amazing experience. So we've had a chance to have talk to some swimmers about five questions. We mm -hmm. asked them five questions. If you would like to ask any of your coaches, any other swimmer, what would they be? And here we go. Okay. What's your favorite movie? Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars. If there was a movie made about your life. Who would you hope to be cast to play you? Edward James Olmos. Wow, that's a little different than what we going He's into. He's a stand and deliver guy. If you had a theme song to be played every time you walked up on the uh, swim deck, what would that theme song be? It would be uh, Right Here, Right Now by Fatboy Slim. Who or what motivates you? My sister and her Olympic ring. One word that describes you. Committed. Justin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.